BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. Auto insurance is probably one of your larger expenses, so periodically take some time to see if it can be reduced. Check for discounts for paying in full versus monthly installments. Consider a higher deductible, improve your credit score, and lastly, don't be afraid to shop around. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU. Farmers Policy Perks are that little extra something you can get when you're a farmer's customer. So to tell you about them, we're adding a little extra something to this ad, smooth saxophone riffs. When you have a farmer's home policy with guaranteed replacement cost, if your home gets destroyed, we'll pay to rebuild it regardless of your limits. Dig it. It's a whole lot of something. Get a quote at Farmers.com. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Optional coverage not available in every state. Only available with select farmers branded policies subject to terms and conditions underwritten by Farmers Trucker Fire Insurance Exchanges or Affiliate. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. This Wednesday at 6 p.m., please join me for I'm Listening. It's a special two-hour program talking about mental health awareness. And uh, it features a lot of great, a lot of great luminaries telling you about their their encounters with mental health, whether it be good, bad, but it's really starting the conversation. Casey Elephant, Duff from Guns N' Roses, Nikki Six, Chris Cornell's daughter Lily. Uh, she's got a new mental health podcast, as a matter of fact. Talk has the power to save lives, and that's why we do this every year. This is the fourth annual. I'm listening, and I'm really, really happy to be proud of it, uh, be part of it. I'm very proud of that. If you want more information, just go to imlistening.org. That is a great resource. And we'll be here at 6 p.m. It's a, a nationwide broadcast. I hope you can be here. It's great to have this conversation. It, it will literally save lives. Let's play B-Mix. It's time to play the game. Yeah. So everybody scream his name. B-Mix. Don't be a Pump it up for Monday! What's that now? You gotta pump it up, man. Oh, okay. It's Monday. All right. Still last... pumped from last night. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can tell. Did you I even couldn't... have any coffee this morning? Uh, about three quarters of my cup. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I couldn't get to sleep last night. <laughs> no. This Sunday night football, they gotta stop it. Oh, they have to stop Sunday night football because old men over there can't sleep? Yes, they should play Sunday night football earlier. <laughs> He's right. I mean, <laughs> just in time uh, for the senior yeah, dinner special. Really, he's yes. absolutely right. Uh, <laughs> and they, they, they got to do it for those silly, you know, East Coasters, and I don't well, like it. That's what I'm going to say is, like, be glad you're not on the East Coast for that. Uh, I couldn't do it. No, you'd be done well, at, like, midnight. No, I would do it. Well, but. no, that's why they do that. That's why we have to do it at 820, because they do it at 520 for those jerks. That starts at 520 for them, 820 for us. I'm sorry, not 820. What? No, you're right. But that's what I. But the idea is for the East Coasters, they make us have to be like as late as it is because they don't want to start it at a reasonable time. You know, we know should be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so Are you gonna, okay. Yeah, you were Did right. You know the sky I, is blue and water yeah. is wet. No, you're right. Do Rand. you know they're three hours ahead of us? <laughs> what I meant to say is, is that if not for the preferential treatment on the on the East Coast, we could have it at a decent time. Is what I mean to say. So you're right, but I was making a different point and effing it up. I don't. I, I still you, don't. You, I, don't, you I, don't, I don't even want to deal with you it. Say, what you said, I know what you're saying. He's like, hey, how about those East Coasters, what they have to deal with? You're right. But, I mean, it could even be earlier, but they don't want to start it any earlier for the East Coasters because it's not prime time for East Coast. So they make them stay up later. Do you understand what I mean? No, like, not at all. Well, and they, I don't really want, I don't really care. If they started it at 7 o'clock, that would be a nice time, but they don't think that's prime time enough. That's what but I'm saying. But we're complaining about the game starting too late. Why would we want it to start later? No, that's what I, I want to start earlier. But if they started earlier on the East Coast, it wouldn't be prime time. That's why they started at eight right. twenty on the East Coast. Let's get to our contestant I got today, you. You got me right, Steve. Yes. Yeah. 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 Sure. Let's get to our contestant today. Right. We've got Peter in Seattle. Hey, right. Peter, are you there? Hey, Peter. 
Good morning, guys. Good morning, Peter. I wish I was stoned like Peter. <laughs> you know, Sorry about I'm that. sober, Steve. What the hell, Uh-oh. man? What kind of Monday yeah, is this? It's going to be a real game. New lead. <laughs> he's got to play. He's got to be competitive. He can't be stoned while he's so, playing Pete Oh, so the smoking starts after the game. <laughs> Victory smoke. All right, Steve, get out of here. For those playing at home, Peter will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. Peter, you can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? Yes, sir. What color hair does the cartoon character Woody Woodpecker have? Red. Yes, the 79 comedy Meatballs was the first starring role for which actor? Um, 70s, uh, pass. Who directed the movie Inglorious Bastards? Um... Quentin Tarantino. Yes, Dubai is a major city located in which Arab country? In, uh, in Pass. Kano and Raiden are characters from what video game franchise? Um, Final Fantasy. No. Pass. How many dimes make up a hundred bucks? Thousand. Yes. What right? What rock icon released the album The Pale Emperor in 2015? Um, Ozzy Osbourne. No. Uh, Merrill Manson. Yes. On a map, what state is directly above Arkansas? Uh, Wyoming. No. Montana. No. Utah. No. What year in the 60s did Honda first sell cars in the U.S.? 62. No. One, two, three, four. Correct. Ooh, maybe. Uh. You know, uh, what was it our buddy over there, Doug? Yeah. Yeah, Doug, uh, who loves movies. Yeah, Doug Benson. He, he got smarter when he smoked. Maybe that. Right? Maybe. Oh, yeah, because of Super Jaime. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so oh, so Peter, Peter went, went in good over here. Peter yeah. went in sober. I don't know, Peter. Maybe, maybe shouldn't have. Your secret weapon might be the ganja. <laughs> well, we'll have the to ganja. see. The Steve, are you ready? Yes! 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 What color hair does the cartoon character Woody Woodpecker have? Yes. Nice job. The 79 that comedy hair? Meatballs has was the first starring role for which Bill actor? Martyr. Yes. Great movie. Who directed the movie Inglorious Bastards? Quentin Tarantino. Yes. Yeah. Dubai is a major city located in which Arab country? Is that Iran? No. Iraq? No. Afghanistan? No. Kano and Kuwait. Raiden. No. Oh. Kano and Raiden are characters from what video game franchise? Mortal Kombat? Yes. Nice How fatality. Many- how many dimes make up a hundred bucks? A lot, man. A yeah. thousand. <laughs> yes. What rock icon released the album The Pale Emperor in 2015? Oh, I saw Marilyn Manson. Yes. On a map, what state is directly above Arkansas? Nebraska. No. Oh. Delaware. No. Mississippi. <laughs> no. What year of the 60s did Honda first sell cars in the U.S.? 1969. Yes. Nice. Say My Name and Bootylicious were both hit songs from what girl group? Destiny's Child. Yes. And Steve, you win eight to uh, four. Uh, sorry, Peter. Oh, man, check out the big brain on Steve. <laughs> why, why, thank you. Uh, nice, nice Pulp Fiction quote there, Pete. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah, that's right. It is, yeah. And then, well, they they, they, they shot Brad. Oh, a texture's with me. Is that actual hair or they have, like... I'm glad you brought that up. It like, has, like, like hair type of things. Oh, like, that's not like, a good I got, answer. I, I was tracking with what you were asking. I'm now curious. Like, are they, is it considered hair for a woodpecker? I was going to ask, and I wasn't going to troll you. I was going to say, hey... I'm just curious. I'm, maybe I've learned something new. I know the birds have feathers, but I didn't know maybe some have hair. Because dogs have fur and some dogs have hair. He's a cartoon it, character, so I'm going to assume at this point that it's hair. Are you out of your mind? Well, it's a fair reasoning because, I mean, Woody talks. Yeah. And not other, woodpeckers don't talk. Okay, I can't do this anymore. There with is the an rat. episode this that says like Woody, hair. Woody Woodpecker Bad Hair Day. Boom. Oh, done. Uh, you you can't do anything you, anymore. You, you mm. didn't know that. Yeah, you didn't know time zones. We're not counting things here. Okay. I mean, you it know. does look like hair. Like feathers. Well, that's the thing. I yeah, think it's a feathered dew. It's a bird. It's a woodpecker. And so it's when a you do, cartoon, it's not real. When you do a trivia con, a trivia game, though, like when I watch shows, it's <sighs> like when they say stuff, it's like, I think I'm learning something. I was legitimately what, like wanting to learn if they had hair or not, because I don't know, and you don't know either. So what? Look it up. We did. We found out. Great. <laughs> yeah, we found out Woody's got hair. <laughs> Look at that. All right. Hey, uh, which state uh, is directly above Arkansas? Uh, hey, here's on a the map. thing. Just because Vicky oh, says there's an episode okay, called great. Bad Hair Day, I'm not sure that the creators would tell you that Woody has hair because he's a freaking bird. Can we get the creator on the phone? I would like to. 
I can but tell I mean, you would like to. I can't learn anything from trivia in this game because Reb doesn't really do the Sorry, research. I'm not a teacher. Good God. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Professor Reb. Yeah. You know what, Steve? I'm going to give you congratulations because that Why? question would have thrown me. Why? I mean, because yeah, I would have, I mean, because no, well, I, why, why am I congratulating you? No, no, I mean, why would he throw you? Because your yeah, brain yeah. figures out that, oh, maybe he means feathers. Where I would be like, wow, birds have hair? And then I'd be thinking, well, the, the red part that I know about Woody, I thought that was feather. But that's my, that's where my mind goes yeah. because of the word hair. And you're able to go, oh, he must mean feathers and hair. It's red. I wish I could be like that. So I'm actually complimenting you. Well, thanks. You don't single out my compliment. All right, well. I, you know what I, I feel like? You're like, no, you're just a moron. I'm not anything no, special. No, I, I mean, it's just a stupid question. I had a stupid answer, and I'm happy I was right. That's really all it boils down to for me. Yeah, I don't have that ability for, to have whatever no that way. is. No way. I couldn't tell. Yeah. So I'm actually complimenting you. I don't know if you work at it or if it's just your natural way of being. I, I, I put zero effort into it. Oh, that even <laughs> sucks worse. I just heard the question. I'm like, okay, I'm assuming he's talking about the feathers, so I'm just going to go with red, and I got it right. Yeah, boom! I, actual woodpeckers are really cute. I like it looks like slick. It looks like their hair, their feathers or hair is slicked back. Yeah, it looks like almost like a little well, mohawk. That's why mm-hmm. I could argue that it might be hair. That's why I asked. It's like maybe that is hair because dogs have fur, but some have hair. I mean, it's I don't know. I'm literally ignorant to it. And then, but every time I ask a question, I'm an ass. When it's like, I well, don't that's know. true. You know. <laughs> right. So this is a BJ. It's a bird that talks. Woody. Well, that I know. It's a. It's a. You know. <laughs> But there is a thing as a real woodpecker. So I was someone says feathers and hair are both made of uh, keratin. Keratin. That too. Yep. Yeah, but they are different, right? Like we wouldn't say, "Hey, Steve, that's a nice head of feathers you have," right? I mean, they wouldn't. We, why? Well, now you're just ball shaming me. Yeah. I have no heather. I have no feathers on why top of I, my why, head. Why do I ask the Texas or anybody questions? Because the Texas is just as dumb as anybody else on this show. Well, I mean, they listen, so right, we have to say that they are pretty dumb because they listen to us, right? No? Maybe. Okay. Well, let's prove it even more. It's time for listeners on the loose. Yes, you text her. You call her. You pick the topic. You guide the show at 206-421-ROCK. You can text us at 77999. We got your calls. We got your text at 917 on the rock. BJ and Mix mornings on the rock. 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, the Rock of Seattle. It's the listeners on the loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show. 206 421 Rock. Text us at 77999. Listeners on the loose. This is where you get to say what you want to say, but you got to say it the way Steve wants you to say it, or you don't get to say it. It's just with energy, BJ. They can say it however they want, as long as they got some pep in their step. Pep in their step. I don't think I've ever said that before. <laughs> but look, show some energy and bring it, um, otherwise you're gone. And we'll have to say goodbye to you. Goodbye, old friend. I'm going to say this right now. Uh-oh. Prior to the birth of Little Tater Tot, that statement probably would never have been said. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I say a lot of stupid things before she was born, and I think I'll continue to say that's, a lot of stupid things after. That's not a stupid well, thing. Well, she is already born, so there, example number one. That's a stupid thing. That's a dad thing. Oh. Pep in your step, that's a dad thing. Uh, if only I could get the dad bod, I'd have the dad jokes, I'd be good to go. Oh, listen, man. I'm working can, towards I, it. I can help you with the dad bod. I've had it for years. Well, no, I want to go with the dad bod that they say of, of guys that were once in shape that are now slightly out of shape, and they say that's a dad bod that's the the physique i aspire to <laughs> oh so in other words if you if you always had the dad bod it doesn't count because you were never in shape in the first place because i was never in shape no no your dad bod's like a legit dad bod i'm talking about the dad bod of like the guy like like you know like Le- Le- leonardo dicaprio all of a sudden like eats a couple of cheeseburgers and they're like look at the dad bod on leonardo dicaprio yeah. Or Jason and Moa after yes. that one day of not working out. Or right. Zach Efron and that new Netflix thing where oh. he goes into nature. So right, the example. Oh, that's right. What is that? Is that show good? I watched one episode and... Oh, it doesn't sound good. It, no, no. It, I mean, it seems pretty interesting, kind of. It doesn't sound good at all. Look at Danny. That is not a... That is not I a couldn't roaring get past endorsement. Episode. Uh-oh. It's, I couldn't... Yeah. It's a travel show. He goes around the world with a wellness expert to find healthy, sustainable ways to live. Okay, you had me at everything except the healthy stuff. I just want to yeah. see him travel the world shirtless. So it's like a show with a message. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, it's it's not a bad message. I mean, it's a good message. It's just one of those things that I'm but, just like, I don't need to watch 10 episodes of it. I couldn't right. get past the first episode, I think was also the big line there. Would I be happy if I watched this with the, you know, the mute button on? Ah. Probably. Okay, cool. Then I'm in. There's been a couple of shows where we watched the trailer, and I looked at my wife, and I'm like, I don't think we need to watch the show. Like, the trailer was good enough. Yeah, you get it. <laughs> I got what I needed to see out of this. Yeah. We decided we had to put a pause on that away show. 
Oh, uh, what happened with that? I thought that was your show. It's great. It's just it's there's it's it's not there's no fun. You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> Okay, so here's the two endorsements for these two shows. No. The Zac Efron Show couldn't get past the first episode. Away, there's no fun. Like, Tune in now, kids. Well, no, like, you know, sometimes you just want, like, a little humor, a little levity, because yeah. it's a heavy show. Oh, yeah. And it's really well done. And and we're going to continue to watch. Don't get me twisted. Like, we're going to continue to watch this show. But on the weekend, we're like, I just feel like watching something a little bit more lighthearted. We watched one episode, and usually what we do is if we have enough time left in the night, we'll be like, well, let's just keep watching. I looked at Sid, and I'm like... I, I need to put a pause on this. That was just too heavy. Because it's like oh, the mom's away in space. The dad's legs aren't working. Oh, spoiler you know, alert. Oh, it's... Don't worry. It doesn't, <laughs> don't worry. It's only a TV show, Bobby. Here's what you need to watch. Uh, I've been watching this with my parents, The Taco Chronicles. What the hell what is the, this? What is this now? So it they better be about tacos. Oh, hell yeah, it is. Okay. It's on its second season. It just came out last Tuesday, and it shows you the different types of tacos from Mexico and how they're made. And they talk to like high end restaurants and then like the little shacks, like you know the corner like places in Mexico. Okay. And even like it's in Spanish, so you could you know probably listen to it dubbed or just read the subtitles. <laughs> but it is ASMR We're food doing porn. A terrible job. Sorry I know. Shows. Yeah, some I mean, people are like, hey, why did you tell me it was you know? Why are it's you like, telling Steve to watch a show that he doesn't understand the language? It's because you can. I just watched the Money Heist and it was overdubbed. So I, I I understand what Vicky's trying well, to no, say. But is, is it dubbed or yeah, is it subtitled? Yeah, they have all the different languages. It's a it's a Netflix original show. Wait, but wait. I think it sounds better. Obviously, I understand it. But there's something about having somebody explain something in their native language, whether you understand it or not. Plus, like the sound effects of like the meat getting cooked well, that's and the fire crackling. So they let you hear it in multiple different languages. Yeah, that's a, pretty cool. Yeah, they have all the different. They have um, all the dubs. Mm-hmm. I don't think I knew that. Does that's Netflix awesome. do that for their shows where for, you can? I know sub titles but they're having dubs now for almost every show i've been looking at because i want to oh, introduce it to cool. my parents they usually have quite a few languages oh steve well then go yeah. watch the show if it's dubbed well i just tried to watch a jackie chan movie that was uh overdubbed <laughs> and it was just not overdubbed well mm. and so i was like oh. i can't continue like we, we we made like about five minutes into it and both of us just looked at each other and said i don't know they didn't do a very good job with the overdubbing on this one it was very apparent that it wasn't even they didn't make an effort to try and match it wow it's amazing how you guys, you and your wife, like it's like the new frontier. You don't know what you're going to watch until you actually sit down and figure it out. Yeah, I mean, if it's not something that like we have, like obviously we'll watch like the Seahawks game when the Seahawks game's going on, or like Stanley Cup Finals. I'm like, okay, I'm watching that. But otherwise, it's like, oh, what do you feel like watching tonight? I never ever have that phenomenon. Isn't it? I can't remember the last time that we sat down and said, what are we going to watch tonight? And watch something that we weren't aware of until we did, we asked that question. You know, you know what I mean uh-huh. by that. Yeah, I've, I can't tell you the last time in my life where I've done that. But like you, you, you television watching like almost like it's a job. There's a structure. There's a like a set break. I'm not criticizing yeah, no. you. I'm, I'm just like I bet there are much more people like you than me. I would think oh, so. 100. percent Yeah, I just that's what I'm saying. I, when you say that, I'm like, I don't know. I really, I mean, I mean, I don't know the last time I did that, which is really do wild. it tonight. Oh, I don't know, man. I got a lot to watch. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got a schedule. What's, what's I got one whole, day? You got to push gotta, everything back. I got a whole regimen. I got. I can't do that, man. So it yeah. says, yeah, Wade definitely needs more action and humor and less drama. It's so well done, but at, at, they just need, you got to give us something like a little moment of like, yeah, oh, okay. See, if it sounds like it's it's here's what it sounds like to me. There's it sounds like they're trying to trick me into watching the show because it's about space, but it really isn't about as space as it is about as much drama. That's what it sounds like to me. Well, they're still in space when the drama's going on. Yeah, see, I want... My kind of space drama from Netflix is lost in space. Because there's family drama, but they're actually in space doing spacey stuff. Like, right. it's really cool space. <laughs> you know, I don't want to see Hillary Swank go, yeah, this is... We're, yeah. We're, we're, yeah, we're in space, but I'm going to fight with my husband with no legs. But no, he has legs. They're oh, he not, has legs. They're just not working. Oh, they don't work. And you'll okay. have to watch it to find out why. Oh, all right. But, uh... It does pose a question, though. Like, could you be in a relationship with someone that goes away to space? Like, because she's, <laughs> she's gone for three years. <laughs> this poses a question. Well, like, my wife and I were talking about, like, there's no way. I couldn't, like, you know, like, oh, oh, if you went to space for a week, I think I could get by without you. But for three years, that's insane. Well, uh, three years without being able to visit her. 
Right. That's the I mean, because look, no, he can't hop into his like you know his his, his Dodge Caravan or whatever he's got and go visit her for a weekend. The Elon Musk mobile, he can't right. go do that. Uh, well, how long has your brother been away from his family in the military? Like, what was oh, the couple, longest stretch? Well, I mean, he'll be gone for a couple of years, but he can still pop in from time to time. That's so, like, the difference. Maybe. Yeah. He maybe was gone like a couple months without seeing his family, and that's a stretch. But like when he was like in Germany or something along those lines, or I think it was um, where was he most recently? Like Dubai, and I think he, Ooh, he yeah, I thought the place was cool. Did he say it was cool? Yeah, yeah, Dubai. I hear it's really cool. I want to go there. Someday. I think it was. Uh, I can't remember if it was. But Dubai. anyway, so, whatever. He, he made it a point to come back to watch Kiss with me, which was cool when they played the Tacoma Dome. Oh, that's I'm nice. Sure, I made his wife but, happy. So three years but, without seeing somebody, though, Steve. You're right. Three years. You do not. I mean, granted, I'm sure they have Zoom or something, right? If yeah. they go, if they go, no, to, they're video. They're video talking every night. But three years to not be able to actually like hold that person, be in their space, feel their energy, their vibe. Yeah, no human being, I don't think, has had to go through that. If you have, I'd love to hear from you. 206421 Rock. If you literally went X amount of years from your significant other where you didn't get to see them at all, like well, physically. Yeah, think, think about your situation. Like when, when all COVID hit, like you were hitting a breaking point without having to see your it wife. Was, so that was, was what, five months. Five. That was five months. Five months. It was that long? Yeah, five months. Oh, that wow. I didn't get to see her. And when I thought I was going to get to see her, and then we, we weren't in the right phase after all, I thought we were going to be in phase two by the time my flight came up, but then. Yeah, the governor went backwards and said we're phase one point five, and I'm like, I then I then I really you're right. That's when you knew I was losing my mind. Like it's been five friggin' months, Governor G. Right. It was, I mean, there was no like end date, so you're just like, when is this going to happen? And I still think there's. I mean, I eventually. I mean, look between you and I. I mean, I've I've changed what essential means. A lot of people told me it's essential you see your wife, so you're an essential traveler. And I never really thought that was essential travel, but now I'm calling it essential travel because we're still in one five. Yeah. Which means non-essential travel is not supposed to happen in the air. I mean, your dong has needs, and they are essential. I didn't know you knew about my dong's needs. Thank you for being so understanding. I didn't, apparently, you guys have been in contact, having some conversations. Thanks. Someone said, uh, my wife was stationed overseas for three years, so it can be done. Thank God for the WhatsApp video. So they literally did not see each other for three yeah. years. Rev, okay. could you do it? Wow. Uh, I don't think so. I really don't think so. It's just That's just too too long of a time. I think she could. You think? Oh, I got you. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, Tough yeah, for you. Oh, look at you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rev didn't like that joke. Wasn't happy with that one. Oh, uh, what about you, Danny? Uh, I could do it. I don't think she could do it. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. wait a minute. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. she's just that awesome. Okay, can we change? Uh, no, she's the one that's like, she's told me if like you were ever, because we've talked about like my aspirations when I was like in high school, I wanted to be in a band on tour. Yeah. And she was like, oh no, I couldn't date a touring musician. That was the wrong question, yeah. Steve. Here's the better question. Could you be away from Lily for three years? No. Your daughter. No, there we go. That's the question. Oh, three years of no visiting? No, I'd be terrible. I couldn't imagine that. Now, here's the thing. Do you think your significant other might get mad at you if you say you could go without seeing them, but you wouldn't go without being around your kids? I always wonder, would I get in trouble for saying that, uh, you know, over the years, if I put my kids above my wife, as far as my hierarchy of who I love, I guess, or who's my favorite? Right. Danny just did. Eh. Well, I think about like, what do you mean, yeah, you just said you could We'd go without seeing your significant other, but, but, you, you can't, you, but you can't go without seeing your kid. Yeah. I think she would understand that. I think she would. Oh, too, yeah. I wouldn't understand. I'd be pissed. You're out of my well, life. Well, because like I, I feel like my wife could tolerate me being gone for X amount of time, but like if I was taking like Tatum with me, there's no chance in hell I could go like you know even a right. day. That's why. Yeah. Like I could I mean. be gone for like a week, whatever. But if I said I'm leaving for a week and I'm bringing Tatum with me, she'd be like, F no. Oh, see, you know what? That was different for me. If Kathy wanted to take the kids for three years somewhere, oh, in those days, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, you know, we're talking about loving parents versus Love you, not kids. loving parents. <laughs> yeah. Love you. You too, Joey and Sarah, you're the best. <laughs> and now look what happened. Joke's on you. They're around you every day. I know. They're here all the time. Yeah. And you have to pay them to ha- be around you. Well, uh, but that's, that, that's no different than anybody else in my life. All right, well, now you take taxes out of it while you pay them. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right, it's, uh, listeners on the loose, you pick the topic, you guide the show, 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Your calls, your texts at 933 on The Rock. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. Talking about money with our kids often begins and ends with, how much do you need? Start by helping them learn the difference between needs, such as clothing, and wants, such as money to go to a concert. 
Share with them how you go about managing your money and what you are saving for and why. Don't be afraid to share the mistakes you have made along the way. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU. Bundle multiple policies for savings of up to 45% on your farmer's auto insurance. It's like a buffet without the regret. Get a quote at Farmers.com. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Not available in every state. Only available with select farmers branded policies. Subject to terms and conditions underwritten by Farmers Trucker Fire Insurance Exchanges. Farmers New World Life Insurance Company or affiliate. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Guy Texas says, guys, I'm sure you watched the Seahawks game last night. I was wondering if you noticed Bill Belichick's face mask. What the hell was he doing with that mask? It looked like it was upside down. Dude, it was so bizarre. I was trying to figure that out, too. What, what, what was it, it looked like he had like a coffee filter on his face. Well, he's got one of those ones that has like the little filter thing, but I am pretty certain that he had it upside down as well. That makes sense. Although I thought so. <laughs> The, the comments on Twitter have been funny. One person wrote, Bill Belichick wears a mask like someone who's never seen a mask before. And then uh, somebody else wrote, it looks like uh, Bill Belichick is dressed up like a Seahawk. Next level. Yeah, I thought he had a beak the whole time. It looks like he has a beak. Yeah. Well, you know what? He, he secretly wants to be part of this organization. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah, he wants to be a winner. Just trying to get in the heads of uh, the, all the Seahawks. He's never really had much winning in his career, and he wants to really be part of a good Clearly. winning atmosphere. Right. Yeah. yeah. What was more awesome, though, his beak or the mullet that his son had? Oh, you're right. That and mullet the, was great. It was That was a serious flow. That, I mean, he had a, I don't know what his name is, Freddie Belichick? Steve What's Belichick. Steve Belichick, yeah, he, he was looking good. Yeah, I did not notice that he had that before. I've never paid attention to Steve Belichick before, though. I didn't even know he had a kid in football. I was completely, I mean, I haven't been paying attention to the Patriots, so I have no idea. Uh, how long is Steve Belichick, Joe? Do you know how long, how many years is Steve Belichick? But he doesn't know either. No. All right, well, what kind of fan is my son? Well, I mean, the, do you know every single assistant coach on your favorite team? Oh, not only do I know every assistant uh, coach, Steve, but uh, we have a, a working relationship, all of us. Oh, okay. We're all on, we're all on Facebook together. Yeah. Alex someone says, I'm impressed that Steve Belichick had the time to organize the Pats defense, teach his dojo how to sweep the leg, and lead a white snake cover band. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> it is a great mullet. It really, really is. When I saw that, the first second I saw that, I was like, oh, man, I hope the Seahawks win so tomorrow I can talk about how awesome Steve Belichick's mullet is without feeling weird. Yeah. Yeah, you're Because right. if they lost to the Patriots, that I was would sucked. Not, I was like, and stupid Steve Belichick and his mullet. Now I can actually like look at it with fondness like I really have. And I have to say, for most of the plays, Steve, for most of the plays, because of the camera angle, I really forget that there's not a crowd there because the crowd noise blends in very, very well. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, because most of the plays you see on a football field on TV don't show the crowd most of the plays. But, I mean, could you imagine what that crowd would have sounded like with oh, the last two seconds left of that game when, when I mean, it's all down to that one play? That, CenturyLink Field, I mean, I would feel like, I, I have a feeling that it would have another like earthquake, quote unquote, like on the, the on the charts, like beast mode, yeah, the beast quake. It was it would have been so rocking. That was like the one moment where I'm like, ah oh, man, if there was ever a time to have a fan base there, it would be for that. And they did mention that, uh, by the way, ab about the crowd and the lack of it. How uh, they noticed that it's you know that's a tough thing for the Seahawks not to be able to disrupt the opposing mm -hmm. offense because of their stadiums. And they said the same thing for KC. Even though Kansas City has fans, it still doesn't make the noise they would if it was filled. Right. It was kind of weird seeing uh, the Cowboys game. They had twenty thousand people there. Yeah. And is that that stadium holds a hundred thousand? And oh, okay. So that's so the, the proper percentage. percentage. Yeah, they had the proper percentage. It was about twenty thousand, but wow. it, it just you know looked like a Seahawks game in the late nineties. Well, like, we did know, have people there. <laughs> yeah, they did. You're right. <laughs> I, and, and our and our place wasn't empty because they had uh, that family or whatever raised the twelfth man flag, and they got to stay. Yeah, that was. A, I saw that was like a Walmart giveaway thing or yeah. something. I, I want to know how to get in on that because they get a suite. Yeah, and they get to raise the twelfth man flag, which is pretty sweet. Although you watch like online, Nick, they showed like the you know the, the players coming out of the tunnel, and you know usually when they come out of the tunnel, it's like crazy fireworks and just insane pomp and circumstance. It was like a fog machine, and one of the players was like a little twelfth man flag. It's like, <laughs> all right, here we are, guys. Yeah, to the fan of that family of four. <laughs> oh man, I we wanna... gotta get the hookup for that. Yeah. Well, I think we had. Just, I guess we probably have to shop at Walmart. I got that down, but I'll have to I'm go down. find out where I enter. They got a McDonald's in there too, so let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Get some of that spicy Walmart's got everything nugget. we yes, need. Please. We've got the Walmart prices, and we've got the McDonald's, and a chance to be going to the Seahawks game raising the flag. I think at this point, Walmart wins. So is this a fun fact? Steve Belichick is Joe Exotic on work release, and apparently he's been coaching with them since 2012 when he started as a safeties coach. Wow. So he's been with them for a lot of years. 
I, I don't know if he's ever played football. That's the other thing is, uh, you know, or, or if he's just how he's risen in the ranks of coaching. I, I know nothing about this guy except, of course, his dad is the dad. The dad. Yeah. So he said, uh, if we're talking hair, I think funnier than uh, Steve Belichick. What about Cam Newton's hair? That yeah. was the funniest. Cam, see, you know what? He's become invisible to me because he always wears stuff or does some stuff up in a way that is always just like pushing whatever fashion envelope that he, you know, he always is. He might be the most fashion envelope pushing NFL player there is. Well, his hair is already kind of out there, but then when you have to wear it with a helmet and then you take the helmet off, at one point, like, I don't even know how else to describe it. It looked very phallic. Like, it was like this big, like, rod. That was <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm not sure what's it. Yeah, that's it right there. Is, it, <laughs> just like, is he trying to do like a man bun or is this well, some other style? It's got like I don't different know. thickness of dreads. And so I think when it's like, you know, done up the way he wants to have it done up, he's got a certain look to it. Uh, you know, whether you dig it or not, that's up to you. I mean, I, I, yeah. but I think when you're wearing a helmet, it oh, kind of puts it in a weird, right. weird position then. And then it just kind of popped up. Like I think about. I have like that Caesar got me as a gift it's like that little wood sculpture where it's oh it's got like a, a wooden barrel and then you pull the barrel off and, and then, then it's like a little springy yeah barrel man a barrel man with a big, yeah a little dingling man that's what it looked like when he pulled his helmet off and I was like Wang. <laughs> do you think that's intentional no I don't know I th- you know what well, if, like, I, if dear I, hairstylist can you make it look like one of those barrel men yeah when it, like, make my hair so that when I pull my helmet off it automatically just jumps up no I, I think, wish I, I mean I don't have the kind of hair that could do that I never did but if, if you've got that kind of hair do it yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but Cam is always Cam, dude. You know, the, the clothes he wears, that guy is always, like, making a statement. Especially the 12th man guy was a doctor dealing with uh, COVID patients. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That, and, and, and So I guess my chance of, like, applying to be a flag raiser is not going to Oh, happen. so Walmart's actually saluting good people, not that, you. That might be it. Yeah. Okay, sorry, yeah. Steve. Well, you know, I, yeah. I don't know how I can apply. When is Walmart going to actually, you know what, pay tribute to people who contribute nothing in the world? When's that going to happen? Come Not out, today. Walmart. What about the rest of us that do nothing and don't really serve anybody? Not the dude. Not today. All right. So I want to know, guys, uh, did you uh, hear about the couple that said the better the wedding gift you give us, the better the food you'll get at the reception? WTF. Yeah, I, I mean, this is the true definition of the entitlement generation. Uh, I, I, you know, and I'm the parent of that generation, so who am I going to blame but me? But you are so entitled that now you think you can have a tear package for your wedding when it comes to what food you give people? What? Well, I mean, it depends. Like, what's the lowest tier? Because that, that would be my thing. It's two like, okay. fifty, and here's what you get: two hundred fifty dollars. You, you get roast chicken or swordfish if you can give them two fifty. Well, I like swordfish. Okay, but you know what? Want to bump it up between two fifty one and five hundred dollars? You get sliced steak or poached salmon. Oh. Okay, now, if you really, uh, how sliced about this? steak? I want to slice my own steak. I don't want to come sliced. Okay, then how about you give them a 501 bucks? Go from 501 to $1,000. You get your filet mignon or oh. lobster tails. Damn. Yeah. It's okay. That's a lot, though, at the low tier. Yeah. Not to, like, 250 is that for one person or is that a couple uh, coming? That's a really good question. That I don't know. Uh, let's see. Uh, the couple's offering people different. It says just people different options for dinner based on how much money they get gift. I would hope that's a couple because a couple comes with one gift. You don't have you don't have your your you and then your significant other bring separate gifts. So I think oh you got to be gosh. right. Yeah, I'm looking at the actual card says so that we may prepare your preferred dinner. Please circle your gift level and indicate a meal choice from each person in your party. Okay. A loving gift is up to two hundred. Oh, up to two hundred fifty. Okay, so anything under two hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, exactly. Okay, uh, yeah. So, oh, uh, gift up to two fifty. Get the roast chicken or the swordfish. So if I was going to give a couple hundred bucks to count, you know, I always think, okay, it's a hundred bucks a person to go to a wedding. Yeah, that's all right. Unless yeah. I really like you, then. But hold on a sec. Don't be too hasty, because if you give a th- between one thousand and one dollars and twenty five hundred bucks, see if you can get a two pound lobster, a souvenir champagne goblet. Or the vegetarian or kosher are. So if you're a vegetarian, they got no option for you until you can give $1,000? Is that true? Uh, I don't think so. I see roast chicken, swordfish, sliced steak or poached salmon, filet mignon, or lobster tails. That's all meat. And then finally at the 1000 is when they bring up yeah, the Yeah, but I'm looking at the actual card itself and it has a little star at the bottom. Oh. I think whoever wrote the story didn't really realize that. Oh, okay. Oh, but it does say if you go 2500 or more, you get a night with my wife before I do. <laughs> oh, how about this? That's pretty cool. All right, so you and I... Are like okay, you get no to way. Consummate our wedding. Uh, Rev, are you uh, thumbs up or thumbs down on this process? Oh, it's terrible. Okay, just all around. Now let's go to the younger generation, the millennials in the room. Uh, we got four millennials. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Thumbs down. Thumbs down. Oh, everybody's thumbs down. Thumbs down. Yeah. 
So who are these people? Rich people. Is she a Karen? I, the, I mean, I, I think they're British because the way they spell Hello. favor. Hello. Or well, maybe they're pretending to be British and they're yeah. like. We're going to be fancy. Uh, Give us or, the fancy presents. I think the Canadian, and they could be Canadian too, because sometimes Canadians will spell those those words that way. But Canadians are nice. Yeah. I know, you're right. So they're probably British. Yeah. Yeah, they're not getting anything from me at that no. point, and I'll just get, I'll eat the chicken, and then I'll use the money I didn't spend on them to just go have my own meal afterwards. Well, it says a gift up to two fifty, so you could bring a buck. Yeah, that's fine. I'll, get, I'll eat the chicken there, yeah. and then I'm going to go get a two pound yeah. lobster tail for cheaper. I, uh, but so, see, you know, but here's the sad thing. Think about this. Does that mean you're at special tables too, like you are at the loser table, or are you sitting and knowing that oh my god, that person's got a lobster, they gave a thousand dollars, and then they see me with my spice, my chicken, and know that I only gave two fifty or less? But I what if like you really like ch- chicken? You like you're like nah, stop looking at me like I'm cheap. I just like chicken. Wouldn't it be funny if everyone <laughs> I like fried chicken? What, I think everyone should I just like go two fifty or less. Could you imagine it's like nobody got the lobster just to kind of spite them? Yeah. I don't like this at all. It's like it, it really, yeah. I mean, I'm with you, Steve. I mean, Vicky, yeah, do it because who wants to be who wants to be at the loser table or the have not table? Like, like it, it, you, you see exactly what everybody gave. What's the you know what I mean? It used to be you give a present, nobody knows what present anybody gave, so you blend in and. But now you know that people gave X amount of dollars. Someone's saying that the, they say that the bride finally admitted that it was just a joke. Oh, right. Right, it was. Or do you think it was like the the, the backlash? Because oh, for us, it's got to be the backlash. The best decision we made, and it was purely economical, but it turned out to be great. Oh, we having like, me at the wedding? That, and okay. also, like, we were told if we wanted waiters and waitresses, like servers to bring the food, it was going to bump up the price. Or you could do kind of like a, a walk-up buffet style, in a sense. Oh, yeah. And I was like, well, we're going to save, like, a lot of money if we don't have servers. That seems like a great idea. But then yeah. on the flip side, it worked out great because if like, you have a little appetite, you don't have to get a bunch of food. Or if you have, a, um, I might have had a couple stoners at my wedding. They, I saw them go up there multiple times and they were like, dude, your wedding is awesome. I can keep eating. Because it was just like yeah. free for all, man. And it worked out perfectly. Oh, yeah. Buffets are, are fantastic. And plus, it was great for me because I just stood right by the buffet and just said hi to everybody as they went through to get their food. Because I knew that the small talk would be fast because everyone's in a rush to get their food. And I can I can knock out everybody's hellos and goodbyes right there. Oh, that was good. It was, it was a fun time. You forgot the most important part. What's that? The, because you had the buffet and saved the money, we could have the magician. That's true. Well, the magician was coming regardless. Oh, he was coming anyway. Oh, yeah. Oh, then the ice sculpture. I was spending that. Yes. That's what you got to have. I was spending the money on the magician and whether or not people could eat or not. <laughs> so, so sorry, kids. No food, but we've got magic. Y'all get bread. That's it. Oh. Jeopardy may have just cheated a contestant out of a correct answer. I'll tell you how at 949 on The Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Looks like Jeopardy may have cheated a contestant out of a correct answer. Uh, this happened last week during Final Jeopardy. This is where the contestants write down their answers. And they had to identify a Motown producer, uh, which was actually Barry Gordy. And a contestant named uh, Betsy wrote Barry Gordy with an A instead of an E. And because of that, she got it wrong. Betsy had no chance of winning, but fans are still upset because there are plenty of instances in the show's history where a contestant spelled the answer wrong, but it still counted because the pronunciation was the same. And so Barry Gordy, even though it's Barry with an E, it's still Barry Gordy. Like, it sounds like Barry. Yeah, is it pronounced Barry or is it pronounced Barry? I've, I've always thought it was Barry, to be honest with you, but I don't know. I've always uh, thought it was spelled Barry, like B-A-R-R-Y, so I can understand why she screwed that up. Yeah, I mean, because somebody, you know, spelled Yule Brenner, the actor, with a U, uh, like Yule Log, but he only has Y-U-L, but that was given the correct answer. So I think they uh, she got screwed. I need a drink. Yeah, I don't blame <laughs> that, Alex. Uh, Ryan Castle, he's up next. He's got your 12-pack. BJ and Miggs, play of the day. See, this is why these new houses, Steve, I think that, uh, you know, you kind of you poo-pooed it a little bit with the last week. With but all the open floor plan versus, like, the contained version. The Zoom room. The Zoom room. The Zoom room is only for Zooming. That way, nothing like that could ever happen. You won't have that news reporter who's catching her naked uh, husband in the shower. You're not going to have the, what was it, the, uh, Chris Cuomo out in the yard naked. You're not going to have any of that if you have a Zoom room. So what you're saying is there's no boom-boom in the Zoom room. That's right. Thank you. <laughs> BJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. 
How much does bankruptcy cost? Well, b- bankruptcy costs, of course, vary depending on what type of uh, case you're filing. There's a certain amount of, of, of court costs and other out-of-pocket costs that you're going to have in any case. Uh, the, the filing fees in a bankruptcy case are, are about $300, whether you file Chapter 7 or Chapter 13. Uh, one of the things to watch out for when you're shopping for bankruptcy attorneys or, or looking at the different cost options is that a lot of times, the, especially the really cheap uh, places, don't tell you up front about the, all the court costs and whatnot that you're going to have to pay in addition to the attorney fees. So make sure that you get the full picture when you're talking, when you're comparing prices of bankruptcy lawyers on what the attorney fees are, how much your court costs are going to be so that you can really make a true comparison. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis us anytime at choose the right chapter.com. BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. Auto insurance is probably one of your larger expenses, so periodically take some time to see if it can be reduced. Check for discounts for paying in full versus monthly installments. Consider a higher deductible, improve your credit score, and lastly, don't be afraid to shop around. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU.